when men say, you know, oh, sex is not really that important to me, they are, they are lying <laughs> because they don't want, you know, they don't want to confess it. They don't want to admit it, you know, in uh, for fear of being seen as a sex addict or sex maniac. Welcome to another edition of the WADT Podcast. We are still on the Manhood 2.0 series. In our previous episode, we discussed about ego, a three-letter word. In this episode, we will be discussing another three-letter word, sex. Nothing is more linked with masculinity than a man's sexual drive and desire. Is it true that men have a great sex drive than women? Is sex a need for men? We will be asking Eugene Chong, Principal Counseling Psychologist at Seeding Minds, about these questions. We will also be talking about porn and masturbation. Now, this isn't the first time we're talking about sex on this podcast. In episode 20, we had Dr. Mohammad Taufik as our guest to talk about men and sex. If you missed that episode, do listen to it, episode 20. Now, just like in previous episodes, we will be sharing with you a promo code that you can use for something that you will find beneficial. So stay tuned to this podcast and to find out what that promo code is. So without any further delay, welcome to Eugene again. Welcome. Thanks. How have you been? Yeah, good. Yeah, today's topic is very... Um, interesting i'm sure it's very interesting to all men because all men will identify with this thing about sex and particularly because uh, masculinity and sex is somehow very closely linked to each other right and uh, yeah. if there is a code of conduct for men in the area of sex i think it would sound like something like you know men's desire should be high and constant men should always be in the mood for sex <laughs> men should be the one initiating sex and <laughs> things like that uh, so these are what I think is code of conduct, you know. But uh, I think, do you think that there it is uh, something that is ingrained into us and somehow it's, you know, it's already permeated our society, even in a relatively conservative society like Singapore, you know, all these uh, messages about sex, especially pertaining to men. Uh, yes, I would guess so. I think because uh, of the culture, uh, I, I think in general, right, maybe I put it uh, this one across, in general, men tends to have a higher hunger for sex. That's what most of the uh, research has found that one of the basic essential of survival for human being in general, besides food, shelter, I think sex is also one of them. Just that I think in terms of the degree of need, right, perhaps men, uh, require that a bit more as compared to women. Of course, there are some reasons to that, which I'm going to share later. But generally, uh, the whole idea of this basic need is developed, right, in terms of like things like security, self-esteem, autonomy, or even the idea of connection. So linking towards the whole idea of connection, probably sex comes in that subcategory. So, um, Eugene and uh, Park Sen, I think sex is always uh, connotes more physical aspect rather than the other aspect of things, which I think is more important, if not uh, as important as physical, such as uh, in sex also, there are, uh, so you say connection, there are emotional, um, something emotional is, is going on there. Uh, however, I think many men or even many people um, may not uh, be able to understand, all right, or even go beyond the physical aspect of sex because I think... Um, it's always related to uh, that in, especially in the media, uh, especially in how, uh, you know, most of, for example, advertisements use sex as, um, you know, a tool to attract the physical aspect of uh, things. So again, has, has uh, we been, have, have we been uh, lopsided in our understanding of uh, what sex is? Yeah, I think what you're yeah. referring to is the sexualization, right? The commercials. I remember uh, beer commercials, right? Anchor Beer, ABC, whatever, you know, they always have this lady, <laughs> right? A lady holding a, a glass of beer or something like that, you know. So what's the purpose? What does women got to do with beer? I mean, you're not asking women, you're not, 
because the women are not the target audience, it's the men. But because men are the target audience, you know, they think that men will look at the advertisement more mm -hmm. because there's a woman in the advertisement. So it's, it's sexualization uh, that's going on. That's very true. I think that also goes uh, pretty well with uh, things like car. So, I mean, if we know in the mm. many cars exhibition, right, women will always be the uh, ambassador <laughs> in whatever car model that they're trying to sell. That's right. Yeah. And and boxing, boxing, you know, is there's always this, this girl holding up, you know, round one, round two. <laughs> I don't know if it yeah. still goes on right now, but I remember watching it on movies, you know. So, we always yeah, ask the question, why must they do this? <laughs> Yeah, probably I think it's also a way to advertise on the market what they are doing. I think that's where I think in the I think in the recent one championship there's been uh, having quite a lot of like female coming out to give the indication of which round round one or two or three or four. What I'm going at is actually sex education happens every time, especially when uh, for the young people. And actually now when uh, internet is so ubiquitous, ubiquitous you know, it's everywhere. Our uh, children are exposed to uh, the smartphone at a very early age. So mm. our children know sex or educate, are educated about sex uh, in the wrong way, in a way in which um, it is being pushed as a commercial product you know, for the purpose of uh, profit. And therefore, it doesn't have any uh, values attached to it. What more education uh, value to it, yeah? Yeah, I, I, I can't remember why I read it, but just today I was reading an article uh, that sex education should begin with consent. That means on the subject of consent, because today, nowadays, you know, you find, you know, uh, there are no boundaries anymore. No, no, nobody respects boundaries, you know. And I was just telling uh, Eugene this morning, I before before this uh, recording, I just read an article in the newspaper, local newspaper, about a seventy-eight year old retiree, um, you know, who was took videos of of a maid, a domestic helper, all right, when she was in the bath. And he had four videos, okay, of uh, through a pinhole camera, and I was just amazed at how tech savvy this seventy-eight-year-old man was. All right, so I think yeah, consent is the place to start. You know that hey, look, you know, okay, sex is one thing, but there are boundaries. Okay, you can't just go around um, making people, or especially for men, making women to have sex, mm. upon, you know, with you. And if there are no, there's no consent, you force yourself upon her, and of course that you know that uh, by doing that you are breaking some rules and some laws already. So, so I think uh, that that's a good advice. You know that sex education should begin with consent. So, in, in the context of the topic, uh, Parkson and uh, Eugene, right? Men need sex, you know, and we see there's a lot of um, very negative uh, news about sexual predators. You know files or even uh, sexual crimes are going up everywhere around the world um you know so why is this happening i mean <clears throat> we talk about uh i mean men need sex you say is is a basic need right but at the same time uh maybe in the context of uh like people like us men who are married married right uh and this happens to people these crimes and so on happens i mean are, con are, are committed by people who are married uh, who have actually, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, channels the right channels to express their sexual desires and so on, and yet it happens. So what's happening, and and in your practice, uh, what do you see uh, the common things that's happening among uh, men who are married but yet, you know, have um, very negative uh, ways to channel their sexual desires? Mm. Well, okay, I think that is a really, really good question. So let me scope at least a little bit in terms of responding to this question. So uh, the way I will go about uh, explaining or exploring this question will be within the context of a committed relationship. I think that will be more clearer. So I think uh, I think the question is asked that why do men uh, look for sex? Is sex something that is so essential for men? That's what we talked about earlier on. And, and then what happens that why are married men going astray and also looking out for alternatives. So maybe uh, let me start off with four key points. Number one, I think that 
the manner man looks at sex is num uh the first thing is that sex is something uh sex or intimacy is something that differentiates between the friendship and the relationship. As they are in the relationship, sex becomes the mode or the way whereby they actually achieve intimacy. Sometimes people always have this conception that man only goes for the physical part, but actually in a research they actually found that a lot of marital dissatisfaction goes into an emotional component, not so much of a physical. Uh, according to research right that I read recently, it's by this person called Gary Newman, very famous psychotherapist in US. I think he uh, kind of concluded based on his like uh, data collection from a uh, huge sample size that he concluded about 48% tends to uh, report of uh, marital dissatisfaction, which is emotional area. Whereas only 8% is mainly on sexual, uh, physical sexual dissatisfaction. So as, as a, uh, probably I would say as opposed to what we typically have, that men tends to go wayward is because physically they are not satisfied. But rather, I think it's a combination of factors. It's not just a physical component. So going back to the question is that because men, unlike women, right, women have many avenues. And we all know that when women goes into a sexual relationship, going to a sexual intimacy, it really goes a lot to do with emotional connection first, followed by a physical connection. Whereas men goes differently because the expression is very different. So the only way probably men knows or expresses will be on physical intimacy. And that's where they tend to find that that will be the one that make them feel fulfilled, complete, or even satisfied. So probably that would be the anger that we are looking at. You are listening to the WADT podcast. If you have enjoyed this episode, be sure to follow or subscribe so that you will not miss any episodes. Share the link to this episode with someone you think that will benefit from it. We want to know what you think of this episode too. Please feel free to share your comments on one of our social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You can also email wearedeadstool at gmail.com if you have a question or need help. And now, back to the program. Sorry, one of the conversations I've had with uh, married men is on this subject of low sex marriage, or in many cases, no sex marriage. And uh, it was very, uh, you know, it was really uh, well attended in that sense because you know many men apparently experience this thing uh, you know not not necessarily they are married for 20 years some are only married for 10 years or even slightly less than 10 years and they are already experiencing low sex marriage you know and so uh, it was a very interesting phenomenon i think you know that uh, men are not even married men are not uh, in that sense uh, you know, finding enough satisfaction by having sex with their wife because the wife are rejecting them. And I think to some extent, um, for whatever reason, it affects their manhood, right? And uh, that's why we're talking about this in, in relation to manhood 2.0, you know, yeah. and uh, it because it affects the manhood, you know, and maybe it's also the messaging, the subtle messaging from society uh, through different means that makes them feel that you know if i'm not having enough sex does it mean i'm not a man or i'm not man enough yeah. and so they for some they might you know they might find that it i need to prove that i'm still a man i'm still very much you know masculine uh, by having sex either with a stranger like you know prostitute or some other means yeah i mean i, I, I think that's a possible uh so-called uh, contributing factor but, uh, but then more so than that, right, from my understanding from most of my clients that I deal with, that does exhibit or does experience a low sex drive, which, which what you mentioned earlier is that they may not have like uh, sex frequently and the duration, I mean, the frequency can be like once, once every quarter, once every six months or even once a year. There are some as long as one, I mean, have, they have not been together, intimate together for the past five years. So these are the situations that they go through. And of course, uh, I would say that um, besides the idea of being more masculine, is that I think for men, we uh, unlike women, right? They have mentors to for for them to actually release. They have a uh, connection for people to talk to. Particularly, men realize a lot. I mean, in the context of a married man, realize a lot on the wife. So the, the so the way of connection, the way of intimacy goes to one person only. 
So men usually don't talk so much on in terms of the details of the sexual uh, intimacy with their friends. Probably we talk about soccer, we talk about hobbies, but we don't really talk about that in detail. But that's the only area or that's the only point of contact that we have with our spouse. So yeah, yeah. therefore, before, before it's talk challenging. About, before we talk about communication, about sex, <laughs> uh, I will tell you, Eugene, men do talk about sex, but we always joke about sex. We don't talk yeah, seriously yeah, we joke about, about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. there are a lot of so sex joke about jokes. It. <laughs> All right, but we seldom yeah. talk seriously about sex. I think that's a very important yeah. point. Yeah, I also that, pick up that's what, a very uh, good point. Well, what Parkson said about rejection, right? So there's there's some understanding, uh, even fact, we can I can say that men usually initiate sex. I mean, I think it is understandable. Uh, yeah. And uh, men, when they get rejected, okay, they seldom, you know, I mean that hurts, okay. And uh, when it hurts, it becomes anger. And how men sometimes express anger, they don't, you know, they don't really physically. Uh, express it maybe internal and then the yeah. sex uh, staff marriage or no sex marriage happens i mean there's also things about um you know the disconnection and also the mood factor right i mean sometimes you approach your partner in the wrong time and uh, she's not in the mood you know and you take it as you're not being loved <laughs> so there are many yeah. uh, instances that deem many many happen. factors right yeah yeah, and then uh, it can even lead to, I mean, to, to, to the extent of the divorce, right? Because uh, a, a man may think that uh, he, he's, he's not getting uh, the connection, not getting the love, uh, and uh, sometimes we downplay, all right, that uh, that sex mm. as a factor. You know, do, do you see that in uh, some of your uh, cases? Yeah, yes, definitely. I think uh, sometimes in the relationship, uh, maybe uh, that, um, that uh, both party, yeah, in some degree, not to uh, identify any one of them, but generally the downplay or the importance of having sexual intimacy on a regular basis tends to be one of the triggering factors, whether it's a divorce direction or whether it's a very conflicted relationship. So this is one of the main uh, observations. So they tend to downplay, not important, not necessary. It's more for just purely on procreation. But rather, I think in the whole idea about sexual intimacy, it's talking about connection. That's, that's why when I, when I first uh, explained the first point, right? Connection is really important. So sexual intimacy is one of the ways to be connected. Yeah, and yeah. Um, I think it's very difficult to always be at the same mood at the same time. <laughs> All right? <laughs> There's always a case yeah. where one person needs more than the other, you know? And uh, men being, as I said just now, maybe the one who initiate, or right, always fall into this uh, rejection trap, okay? Yeah. So I think what what your advice to men, both men and women, okay? When when yeah. this this thing happen, what we should what should be the attitude, and what sh you know what what is the right attitude to have rather than uh, take it at face value? Yeah. So normally I will always advise the uh, the couple is that let's have an open discussion about your expectation about sexual in the uh, intimacy. So even during my early like uh, uh so called premarital preparation course, I will always advise couple let's talk about sex even before you go to marriage because you need to be open about your expectation. So if I were to uh um probably encounter a couple with this particular issue, I will always start off with expectation. What do you want out of your sexual life? And of course, with all this discussion, normally we zoom in. Okay, let's make it more practical. Let's, uh, I mean, it's, I mean, it's good to talk about all this concept and all this theory, but let's be practical. Let's make it a point to set aside a time, let's say once in a week, to have sexual intimacy. It means that you have to plan it. You cannot wait till, like, for example, you're saying the mood. Sometimes I have the mood, my wife may not, may not have the mood, so it becomes quite challenging. So why not, in such a busy uh, society as Singapore, let's plan our sexual intimacy so that we remove all distraction or other contributing factor that may affect the intimacy that we're going to have at the point of time. Yeah, I think that's very important to have conversations. And, you know, uh, men when men say, you know, oh, sex is not really that important to me, they're they are lying. <laughs> because they don't want, you know, they don't want to confess it, they don't want to admit it, you know, in uh, for fear of being seen as a sex addict or sex maniac you know yeah. so that's why they would yeah. say something like oh no nah, it's not really bothering me i mean of course i wish to have more but if i can't have more my wife doesn't you know it, you know it's not uh often not in the mood it's okay it's okay you know uh yeah. 
Very, very often they're lying. So I want to say to men, stop lying. <laughs> be yeah. honest, okay? Be honest to talk about it, especially be honest to talk about it with your wife, not insisting, not demanding, but at least let your wife know how it makes you feel, all right? So because, you know, intimacy comes with, uh, as a result of being open and honest with one another also, you see? And I think uh, the, other, the other thing I want to say is, uh, I think sex is a need, all right, for both men and women. Uh, but today we're talking about men for three reasons. Number one is procreation, and I think you know if we if we believe in evolution or whatever we want to call it, you know that it's built into us that uh, you know we want to have sex because there is a there is some instinct in us to want to procreate, you know, to 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 have yeah. babies. Uh, and things like that, all right? And of course, in, in our modern world or for many, many generations already, uh, we have this thing called marriage also, okay? And so that's number one, procreation. Number two, of course, is for pleasure, okay? Uh, because sex is fun, yes. You know, it, it stimulates us in many ways and, you know, it, it, it uh, releases dopamine and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But if we just stop there for pleasure, you know, so therefore men, you know, sometimes turn to, either masturbation or pornography because through that they already achieve it by having you know by uh, having uh, pleasure it brings them pleasure but at, for many many men they at the end of it whether you have you know just masturbated or watched porn and done both uh, many men will admit that they still feel lonely they feel still feel you know something is missing and what is missing is the third thing which is intimacy and that's what you've been talking about you see yeah. and so I, I i see that it is a need to, for three, these three things, okay, but uh, I still challenge the idea and I challenge men to think about it, that is, is it really a need that you must have it, okay? Is it a, a need that is equivalent with your need for food and water? Because without food, you can last maybe 40 days or even for some longer. Without water, you can't last, you know, many, many days, right? Maybe, I, I can't remember, two, three days, four four days a week you know mm. so it's sex in that category okay i believe it's not i believe you can go three mm. years without sex okay and be totally normal you won't go crazy <laughs> that, that's die. what i'm trying to say <laughs> But at the same time, yeah. Aksan, um, if yeah. let's say in the context of marriage, right, and uh, I'm not saying it applies to everyone. Of course, people with medical condition and even sometimes trauma, child trauma may have problems with uh, uh, having sex having sex in a marriage, right? Because uh, you talk about uh, marriage without sex and so on. And I think that is a um, definition uh, I read uh, when you have like less than 10 times a year that can be defined as no sex marriage, you know. But again, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't mean yeah. doesn't mean no sex at all. Although I've seen cases of uh, people with three years and uh, seven years, uh, no sex at all, you know, due to certain uh, very specific condition. But at the same time, um, sex plays a part, as you said, right, in um, ensuring and uh, strengthening mm -hmm. the intimacy. Okay. So again, without that sexual relationship, Okay, what other ways to attain uh, intimacy that is as good as being in a sexual relation? Because what happens in a sexual relationship is that you really put all your gut down. I mean, literally, you know, put yeah. everything out, you know, and you reveal yourself as what you are, you know, um, as a person. But at the same time, sometimes we just take that, you know, as in, in, as a face value, right? Actually, in that uh, action itself, okay, it's about you trying to go into the person, all right, uh, all all in, I mean, knowing the person and, uh, you know, making sure that no one else know you better than the other person. So I thought um, sex has that role to play, you know, and it's been designed not only as the, the, the first two P, right, the procreation and uh, pleasure, right, but I think the third one is is very, very important. Uh, in with, and without that, I think that's where uh, the other things come in the uh what do you call it uh cope the other coping mechanisms you mentioned pornography uh, masturbation which mm -hmm. can yeah. lead to problems in uh the third aspect of 
uh, the the sexual relationship because if you do those things uh, and you realize that actually you will be less intimate, you know, in, if you're a partner, mm. and, and and that's what I think. I, yeah, I want to I, challenge I mean, this uh, idea that you know, um, sex is the highest level of intimacy. I I don't agree with that. Um, I believe that sex is just one way to uh, achieve mm. intimacy between a married couple. Uh, there are yeah. many ways besides sex. You can you can actually not have sex but still have a very high level of intimacy, uh, because yeah. you know yet yeah, you you say you know sex is where you really let all your gut down. I don't agree because men can hide how they how they feel even during sex, <laughs> you know, uh, and not what Agreed. not not bold enough to talk about it even with their you know their spouse. So I don't mm. think that you know if they are able to open up about how they feel even about having sex you know about whether they are performing well or not sometimes men have these questions you know and they don't even dare to ask their wife you know how do you think i did in 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 the you know in bed all right mm -hmm. uh, so if they can ask that question if they're bold enough to ask that question that is the highest level of they have, they actually have gone up a few notches in the level of intimacy mm -hmm. <laughs> that's that's my Please, opinion don't to ask because no. the fear of getting the wrong answer Correct, correct. So that's why yeah. that's why I'm saying that you know the, the sexual intercourse is not the highest level of intimacy. Okay, it is just one of the many. Therefore, I believe yeah. and and I want to challenge men to think again. Why do they think that sex is so important to them? Okay, because uh, ultimately, as human beings, our greatest need or greater need than just sexual pleasure, okay, is connection and intimacy. Yeah. You see, and there are many, many ways to achieve that, right? Besides sex. Correct. I think I think besides the physical sexual intimacy, as what we've been uh, talking about earlier, right? There are other ways uh, that we talk about recreation and intimacy, communication, whereby right, we build the intimacy area. But but of course, beyond that, right? Uh, sex itself is a very unique kind of like relationship that you have with your partner that comes together, which I think is important as a physical aspect. But it shouldn't be just purely by itself. Otherwise, it's just an exchange. But that's where the communication comes in to understand and to uh, uh, be observant and also to communicate with your spouse. So I think it's a few combination that comes together that create the entire concept of what exactly is intimacy. So physical intimacy is only one of the pillars. But I would say it's quite an important pillar, especially in a committed married relationship. So uh, I think in a way that we need to know how to balance all these different areas as part of our ecosystem of being in a committed relationship. Yeah, yep, I agree in, also. Uh, in, in, the, in the aspect of, you know, usually men have a stronger sex drive, you know, than women. And now we're talking about men, right? Um, yeah. You know, and uh, but but I, I, I heard about this uh, uh, speaker who says that uh, actually the one that, that has lower uh, sex drive controls the sexual relationship. So again, it, it's it's um, you know very uh, opposite of what we thought, right? You know, because we mm. think men is the one that controls relationship, but actually sometimes women is the one assuming that they have a lower sex drive is the one that actually controls. So I think again, the communication, the ability to understand um, how your partner feels that you know connection, right? Because people are connected in a different way. Not every time people have the mood, you know, for sex or people have the mood to be physical. And uh, and the fact is, you know, men get aroused easily, easier than women. Okay. Even yeah. in, in <laughs> even in a sexual uh, activity, right? Uh, if a man just go into it, all right, not thinking of the women uh, who has to be stimulated and they need time to be stimulated. And mm. if you don't care, you just think about your own emotions i think that is where uh the controls uh will be switched <laughs> yeah so so so, so, I would, so i would say that probably is a lot of like self-awareness about what is the need so there was a saying that goes like this is that when we go into a intimacy relationship right we always use this uh, framework is that how can i satisfy the other partner rather than what can the, what can my partner satisfy me so if you put it in that kind of direction, right, you tend to think about what is the need, uh, what does a partner need first before you do anything. Then that will make the relationship a bit more uh, different as what traditionally people think that, like, okay, I just want to fulfill my need and you need to fulfill my need. Well said. I, I totally agree with that, Eugene. You know, that um, 
yeah, we should not have that self-centered approach or mindset when it comes to anything, including sex, you know, that, mm. oh, I, I need sex because I, I want to be pleased, I want to be satisfied and all that. Yeah, you know, you enter into that because you're in that relationship. It's about love. Love is to give, you know, a bit of give and take and things like that. So it, when even when when talking about sex, it's about how do you how do you uh, please your partner rather than how much your partner can please you. I think that will will really um, put things in a different light and different perspective. And you know, your your. When, when you don't have it, you are not so likely to feel that you have been deprived, <laughs> you know, and you don't feel, you know, you have been rejected and things like that. So I think that I think that's excellent. Let, let's move into masturbation and pornography. Okay, what about it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it's obvious. What about question. it? But... <laughs> okay, um, well. Is masturbation anything wrong with it? Are there benefits? Are there, you know, um, negative impact and side effects of it? I mean, generally from a, uh, from a medical point of view, right, or maybe from a uh, psychological point of view, it does have certain benefit. You know, so like, that's what typically they do point out that research has been carried out that has kind of like reduced stress, increased the uh, energy level, you feel a bit more happy, less anxiety, and improve sleep and so on and so forth. So these are all the general uh, benefit that uh, most, most, mostly people will try to explain why it's, it's probably pretty important. But maybe today I'll take a different position because I think there's enough benefit that talks about masturbation. So I will look at in a bit more in the psychological impact on my client who has been like excessively masturbating. Because um, what happens is that when we uh, 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 when a person goes through uh, masturbation, right, it becomes a uh, so-called I would say a, a mode whereby they use it to self-pleasurize themselves, which originally right the connection between the couple tends to be self-giving. I give it to you. I want to love you as what we talked about earlier on. But masturbation is a self-satisfying, self-pleasurizing kind of like action and behavior and of course in terms of physical issues right it tends to cause a bit more problem because when uh, when when one masturbate right it may cause irritation to the genital area there can be uh, uh undue abrasion there could be swelling as well in some of the so-called data they have collected in certain individual who does that so uh be beyond that another point i want to bring out is that because when when a person tends to masturbate quite frequently it becomes not an addiction per se, because in the uh, DSM-5, there was no such a uh, condition as yet because due to other reasons. But if a person continues to have excessive masturbation, it becomes more and more needy for the person who actually, if he were to go into a intimacy with his partner, it will be more challenging because it needs more energy to even increase the uh, so-called the uh, energy level the so-called arousal before they can get into a uh, physical intimacy. So that would be one of the challenges that actually I observe for many of my clients. As well as uh, other things that may affect them psychologically, they can be overwhelmed. Like for example, if excessive masturbation tends to cause the person to lose attention at work because the, because the need for you to pay attention to work right, is very important, you need to give your energy, but excessive masturbation tends to give an addictive cycle in your system. So it may affect your work and also affect your attention. I see. So uh, definitely it leads to a bit of insensitivity, insensitivity right? And therefore affect that uh, intimate, um, um, you know, intimacy. But at the same time, uh, you mentioned about uh, people who uh, regularly uh, use uh, masturbation, right, as a way to release stress or even to overcome their sexual uh, relationship problems. Okay, mm. and um, how do you advise them? I mean, how do you advise them such that that becomes not the way to cope? You know, there are many ways mm. to uh, cope uh, with uh, your sexual relationship problem. 
And uh, this yeah. is probably one of the ways which is it may lead to excessiveness. But what are the other ways that uh, can help? Yeah. So to continue this point, right, the more the person uses this approach, right, it negatively reinforces the behavior that, yes, I think that this way I can manage on my own. I do not need my partner. My partner cannot fulfill that part of connection when we talked about earlier on. And this continues and it will cause a drift between both parties. So, I mean, in a way, right, if we're talking about managing stress, anxiety, managing all these like, uh, re uh, relationship uh, situation, right? I think a good way is to find ways a good coping strategy to manage all this anxiety and of course in terms of relationship i think it's good for any couple to go for any relationship counseling so to help them to have a uh, neutral perspective to look at the relationship in a very neutral way and see what is going on and would uh would there be other ways of coping for them to work together as a couple to improve their relationship i think that's really crucial because if you don't improve relationship by doing so, right, having excessive masturbation, it doesn't help to build the relationship stronger. It's going to drift further and further apart. Yeah, so masturbation is, uh, it does relieve stress, just like smoking cigarettes, it does relieve yeah. stress. But should you use that as your go-to method to relieve stress? The answer is no, right? You you can always find many others, other more healthy methods of coping with your stress and managing your stress and reducing your stress yeah so i think that that is the point but i think also connected to with, with masturbation is pornography because um pornography definitely helps in masturbation in terms of your stimulation because the yeah. biggest sex organ in the human body is not your, your genitals brain. but your brain, your brain right <laughs> so you need to have certain images in your in your brain in your mind in order to stimulate you know in fact it is a fact that uh, uh you know a, a person a man or even a woman can 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 be so aroused you know and achieve orgasm without even touching himself or herself okay because the biggest sex organ is the brain okay so yeah usually when when men who are you know, uh, using masturbation as a means of whatever, uh, it usually leads into or already uh, is connected with pornography use. So I think that is that itself is another topic which I think we can now go into. So uh, what, what is the science regarding pornography? How does it affect us? Uh, generally, pornography... Uh which is the same thing that we, well, what we talk about is that it creates a very uh, stacking effect that it, uh, uh, it releases certain dopamine uh, transmitter that's in your brain that increases our pleasure. So the more we watch, right, the more we find that uh, we want to act out according to what the video portrays. And sometimes because of that, we may have a uh, so-called unrealistic expectation towards our spouse of how the woman in the video is doing and we hope that our spouse will do as well but that is really a different reality what probably you'll be watching on the video right will be something that's acted out it's not a reality and that's what i think many men may fall into as a threat they have this uh, so-called mental picture is that what they are watching could be something that is real but in reality most men suffers especially when they are in their own individual sexual intimacy where what they experience is totally different from what they watch in the video. So I would say that the science behind it is really a uh, rewarding system that goes around that kind of like addictive cycle that goes around that tends to uh, stack up as they watch more and more. They find that uh, they will find that their relationship with their partner and their spouse right tends to deteriorate, and it doesn't really increase the uh, so-called intimacy in the long run. Maybe initially yes, because it's something that's new, that's novelty. But after a while, you find that. You need more and more of it. It's more like taking a drug that after taking a 10 mg of morphine is not uh, adequate. You need to take a 20 mg, a 30 mg, maybe even more down the road. So, so there is a, a, um, a factor of addiction related to pornography? Yes, there's a factor of addiction. But uh, so far, we don't really call it as an addictive disorder or addiction disorder. But I think the, yeah, um, the official addiction it's, here is, I mean, you, it becomes a habit, right? That uh, yeah. there is a trigger, you know, a trigger 
and then you respond and then um, you know you you get rewarded you know so again um and that becomes something which uh, in the brain it becomes um, automatic you know and it, if it happens too many times uh it becomes i mean for the sake of bet, uh, lack of a better term addiction something that you do uh, that has a negative effect without you knowing it uh, on other aspects mm. of your life yeah yeah so so when you talk about the the video and uh, not having to realize about the reality the re- it's not realistic you know it's not reality you know, it comes me to imagine sometimes uh, when we watch superman right of course mm. when we watch okay superman is real you know but after all you know that yeah. it's not real you know so you don't better you don't better go up to the 20th floor and start jumping down and think that you can yeah. fly right? yeah. <laughs> so like, i thought it's like... a good way to remind ourselves cool, you know, cool. that yeah when you watch pornography nothing real is happening actually it's just you Correct. know hollywood trying to get uh viral you know and uh, get viewership you know nothing else like yeah. uh, in the hollywood movies yeah and, uh, absolutely similarly even to another point just to digress a little bit even for women right when they are uh, i mean uh probably for them uh most of them pornography is not something that they tend to uh yearn for it but they tend to yearn for something like a key drama because this is something that they hope that things will be like in the relationship but in reality even for the country of Korea, they don't really have that kind of like uh, re- reality in their own life. It's more something they try to fabricate and try to kind of attract people to hope that one day they can achieve the kind of like idealistic relationship between a man and a woman. So are you trying mm. to equate uh, men watching pornography and women watching uh, K-drama? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> well, my wife will, will be angry. What are you trying to say, Hafid? <laughs> <laughs> But but I think that's truth, right? I mean, in a way that uh, I mean, we we can uh, binge watch a certain uh, you know series and series of episodes, uh, being even sometimes you know be so involved with the whole uh, story, which we know that it's not real. Yeah. And, and, it, and the, not, the, it might not be. I mean, it's not real because it's drama, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I think it, it's closer to real life, you know, compared to porn. Porn, of course, you know it's it's um you know you're watching two human beings you know doing doing something, uh but the 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 thing is you know it it's uh hyper stimulating you know that means you know you, you it raises your expectation of what sex uh, should look like you know and therefore it, it forms your it goes into something called your sex script your sex script is you know your idea your perception of what sex uh can look like or you know what are the you know what what are the things you can expect from it and then when you have sex with your spouse your wife for example you know and it, your wife doesn't do the things that you have watched on <laughs> on on porn you know then you get disappointed you know and uh, yeah. and sometimes you don't even get aroused because you have already been aroused uh, through porn and your you know your your threshold is much higher and therefore yeah. you know you 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 perform you you can't perform in in real life with your uh, with your actual partner and you know there are many uh, research that that actually shows watching porn. I'm sure this is re- regarding habitual watching. It's not just once a long, long while, or maybe you accidentally stumble upon a porn site that kind of thing. But people who are watching it regularly affects your brain physically. That in a sense that it, it's one one study, for example, shows that you know they it actually shrinks the part of your brain that is linked to pleasure the part called the striatum you know the part of the brain that makes up the reward system and they found yeah. that this part of the brain is smaller in people who watch porn a lot compared to those who you know watch it once in a while or don't watch it at all you see so i think that this is really frightening and therefore uh, there's a new website a new in a sense i think it came out maybe about a year or two ago uh, and the name of the website is fightthenewdrug.org, okay? And I, I, I think we want to, people to know that so that they can go. There are lots of good information there, uh, studies, that, you know, for example, this one, I actually took it from there, that t- talks about the, you know, that pornography is a drug, all right, that you can actually get hooked on and you can become dependent upon, but it also has... Um, negative impacts on your brain and many many parts of your life yeah. and one one more thing that you know when 
about men watching porn, and this I find also very interesting. Okay, besides, you know, as a stress relief, you know, some people wants to uh, just curious, you know, and so they watch. And once you watch porn, um, you want more. Okay, so people will look for more interesting, more, uh, you know, fantastic, <laughs> more. I don't know what to call it. Like, okay, they, they just want to raise. Yeah, they want want to raise the bar, you know. Um, okay, but there's one more reason which is interesting, and that is one of the reason why men some men watch porn is because of the fear of rejection, you know, and the sense of shame. Okay, uh, and so because they they are not confident in themselves, and so they turn to this fantasy world rather than living in the real world. They they choose to live in a fantasy world where they can imagine themselves doing all kinds of things <laughs> you know and, and without any shame and without any fear of rejection okay they can do imagine themselves doing all kinds of things uh, sexually okay and and they they're not sure they can do it or maybe they're sure they can't do it in real life and so this is a very interesting thing so i i, I want to just say to men you know uh Ask yourself, really, seek, seek your, you know, search your soul and ask yourself, why are you doing these things? If you're into porn, if you're into, you know, masturbation regularly, habitually, you know, talk to, talk to someone, talk to us, Hafiz and I, all right? We are very open with you. So, you know, I hope that you can also be open with us because this is for your own good, mental health-wise, physical health-wise, brain health-wise, as well as relational, you know, between you and your wife. Please do talk to us. Yeah, and of course, talk to Eugene. All right. Yes, and talk to Eugene expert. too. <laughs> expert yeah, among us. Yeah, so to give a bit of advertisement for him. So he's from Seeding Minds. Uh, and today's topic, I think, is so important. Uh, we seldom talk about it, but I think uh, we purposely uh, choose this topic again because uh, there, there were other top. Uh, the, the topic has been uh, dealt with earlier. Uh, but we spoke to a medical doctor. Now we spoke to a, a clinical psychologist, which I think that gives us a very different perspective. And we think you are indeed struggling with uh, some of the issues that we have discussed. You know, in, uh, please, please do not hesitate to get in touch with uh, Eugene uh, at Seeding Minds, and you can find the link in the in the show notes later. Um, and use the promo code WADT20 to get a 20% discount for your first two counseling sessions. And uh, the code is valid till 31st of July 2022, which means that the two sessions uh, must be held before 31st July 2022. So, again, getting back to this topic, well, we are talking uh, longer than usual, huh, Paksan, on this. Uh, because we're, we're practically covering three topics in one podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think um, we need to talk about this. I think the fact that uh, for men, especially, if we uh, refuse or do not know even how to talk about sex in a healthy way, um, I then we will express it in an unhealthy way. Either uh, by, I mean, just enjoying sex jokes all the time. And that becomes, you know, uh, not uh, effective in uh, solving any issues that we, we really face. And uh, also, uh, I think some of the issues that we have spoken about how we can express um, ourselves uh, in terms of when we have these issues. There, there are many ways. We can talk to our spouse. We can talk to a third party who we trust. Uh, I mean, we can talk to friends who we can who, who we trust. But make sure that take friends' advice with a pinch of salt, you know, because they are not trained. They may uh, themselves, uh, you know, try and error. You know, although they may be honest and uh, sincere about helping. Yeah, that's right. Eugene, any last words about uh, advice about, uh, yeah, about this area of sex, porn and masturbation? Um, not much. I think uh, most of it has been covered early on. But I think important to remember as men, I think this is the important area. Learn to be open and talk to your spouse or your partner. Wonderful. Yes. Yes. Be open about it. All right. Nothing to be ashamed of because we are all humans. We all have the same urges to different degrees, of course, you know, but there are reasons for it. So nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to hide. Be open. Once you open it up and expose it to the light, instead of keeping it in the dark, uh, things will only get better. Right. And especially so, today, right, yes. where we, we mentioned uh, Parkson and Eugene. Um, sex education is, I mean, is being done in, in many ways, sometimes in, in the wrong way. I mean, 
people are exposed to um, information about sex. You know, children, right? Uh, if we don't start to feel comfortable talking to our own spouse, to our own partner, because uh, of this, I don't think we should. We can be comfortable talking to our children. And I think our children need to uh, uh, get the right information um, rather than they themselves uh, look for their information and uh, that may become uh, negative uh, in result in negative uh, uh, you know uh, ways that uh, because uh, there's no guidance and uh, you know it's so free out there yeah mm. very good point yes you know yeah we, we need to be able to talk about it openly uh, appropriately so that we can also guide our children and we will not our face will not turn red once our children ask us <laughs> mention that three letter word <laughs> yeah yeah okay and, and don't, don't forget something it's not just the boys the girls as well if we have daughters all right mm. you know we need to be comfortable to talk to our, to our daughters all right true. Uh, and Very true. Uh, the daughters need to get it from us and to feel safe uh, when we talk about it rather than getting it from other people who you know we do not know whether they can be trusted or not you know i'm sure there are other cases there are cases where um, fathers also take advantage of their children you know but i think those are very very isolated cases but i think most fathers i'm sure they want the best for the children either daughters or sons mm. i think uh, information should come from from us yeah All right thank you very right. much uh, yeah, everyone okay. That's such a good discussion This is the WADT Podcast and thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed today's episode, be sure to like, follow or subscribe so that you will not miss any episodes. Share the link to this episode with someone you think that will benefit from it. We want to know what you think of this episode too. Please feel free to share your comments on one of our social media platforms. We are on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube. You can also email wearedads2 at gmail.com if you have a question or need help. Till the next time, this is Hafiz and Parkson signing off.